once in a while. But right, anyhow, okay. I would like to touch a topic that is not very often touched, which is upper body training for kicking. There's a lot of different reasons why to do upper body training for kicking. Some of it has to do with the fact that some of the kicks get wind up by the upper body. Sometimes it has to do with the fact that you need strong enough arm to keep the guard and not let your arms fly around. And that's what we're going to focus on right now. Very often when people kick, the arms fly. In some styles, it's normal. When you saw a Muay Thai roundhouse kick, the arms actually supposed to come up and come down. Now, when I saw a Muay Thai roundhouse kick, I tried to minimize that. Um, it may not be appropriate for the style and it's so sensitive. That's how I do it personally. But a lot of other kicks, especially the front line uh, kicks, like a front kick, for instance, or an axe kick or whatever, the hands do not have to move. There's no reason for the hands to move. Okay. Um, the same thing has to do with the front line um, or even the sideline front leg kicks. Front leg side kick, front leg roundhouse, right front leg hook kick. The arms are supposed to stay intact and not move at all. Okay, if you can manage it. There's a lot of reasons for this. The most obvious one is that you have the guard there. Okay, your arms do not come down. Okay, and it's possible. It's not very easy, but it's possible to go through the whole round and keep your hands in the same place, okay? Now, I'm not saying that if a part of your strategy is to move the hand around so your opponent doesn't understand what your hands are doing, um, you should not move them. In that case, you should move them as long as you understand what your hands are doing yourself. But also, very often, when you kick, you telegraph your kicks by your hands moving around, okay? Very often, people know that you're going to throw a front leg kick uh, your front arm is going to drop. You're going to throw a rear leg kick, your rear hand is going to drop. Okay, and this is a very common factor. So if you can keep your hands completely steady when you throw the kick, a lot of people get taken by surprise because they do not expect your kick to come out with your hands completely not trying to counterbalance the kick or not trying to somehow keep your body in line or in balance. Okay, so there's two very simple exercises you can do. Okay, to strengthen your arms in such a way that once you begin to throw kicks, you have enough shoulder strength to keep your guard exactly where it is. So you bring up a roundhouse chamber, the guard does not move. You bring up a side kick chamber, the guard does not move. Front kick chamber, the guard does not move. Okay? Even if you're just doing it for the elements of surprise, just to have that in your arsenal, it's still a good thing to do. Okay? So I'm going to demonstrate the same exercise with two different things. You can do this right, right here, I have um, ankle weights. You can use a dumbbell if you like. And I'm also going to demonstrate the same thing with a resistance band. Okay, so staying in the guard, you have a dumbbell here. You extend the arm down. Okay, so what you're doing here is pretty much working your elbow flexors and you're working your outward rotators and you bring it up. Okay, for a lot of people staying in this position, it's very strainful on the back of the shoulder because back of the shoulder as well as other outward rotators of the shoulder are not very well developed in most people so it's difficult to keep it this way. But the inward rotators are well developed so most people do not have a problem with that but this is a problem. Okay, So from here you would drop the arm down. You can do just the rotation if you like Okay, but it's probably better to drop the arm down and come up. More of a natural movement. Okay, straight arm down and up. Working the elbow flexors and the outward rotators. Okay, the other arm stays here, does not move. Same thing here. Okay, with the other arm. Okay, not exactly the same movement for the front arm, the rear arm, because of the position of the body. Okay. But that's one. And the second is simply a shoulder press in this position. So you simply perform a shoulder press. Okay? Same thing on the other side. Shoulder press. Okay? Now, in terms of resistance, okay, I recommend at least one heavy set, but I recommend two sets where you would go up to 25, 30, 35, 40 reps. Okay? Because Number one, you do need the endurance, but you also do need the strength. Endurance alone is not going to keep your hand here if you do not have enough strength 
to balance out those very strong inward rotators. Okay? Now the same thing if you have a resistant band or a resistant tube like I have, it makes no difference. Okay? You have the tube in your hands. Okay? Your guards are up. You drop it, bring it back. Drop it, bring it back. Okay? And same thing with pressing up. Now when you press up, make sure that you have a vertical form. Vertical form. And then you would do the same thing with the rear hand. Rotate and up. Okay? Now the goal is to keep the guard where you would keep it in actual combat. Now most people keep the guard here. I keep my guard here most of the time. Um, if you keep your guard slower, if you have special way of how you keep your hands, that's what you would do. Of course, if your guard is totally different, then you would need totally different exercise for it, but most people keep it approximately here. Okay. Now, if you want a little bit more challenge, you would take the band, place it under the opposite leg. So, I'm having my front left hand holding on and my rear right foot here that becomes a little bit more challenging okay with exactly the same resistance and then of course you can combine the two movements okay for a lot of people it's not going to be easy because like I said the outward rotators are pretty weak most people there's nothing that train them uh, that people do on a regular basis unless you specifically do exercise for that so it might be an issue. And then you would do the same thing crushing over to the other side for the rear hand. For your rear guard, you would put it under the front leg. Okay. Rotate up, press up. Rotate, press up. At first you would isolate the movement. Isolate the movement. And then you would do them together. Okay. So just those two simple exercises will ensure that your guard is dead in place. If you want to keep it there to protect yourself and you find that every time you drop your hands you get hit in the face, okay, or you find that you throw a kick and then by the time you recover your hands are not in proper position to punch, or like I said before, you want to catch your opponent by surprise. Your hands are here, they're steady, your opponent does not think you're going to kick with, without dropping the guard and all suddenly they get kicked and your hands stay here. Okay, so that's about the guard, how to train to keep your guard while kicking.